quick video demonstration between three SD cards, a class 4, 4 GB, a class 10, 16 GB, and a ultra high speed 1, 16 GB card. The test will be on my 2011 quad core MacBook Pro, and I'll be using a Sonnet Express card, ultra high speed 1 Pro reader writer. So for the first test, I shall be using a SanDisk 4GB Class 4 card. Now to make sure all these are going to give exactly the same speed chance, I'm going to format all the cards to the same. So it's going to be NTFS 64K cluster size. Quick format. Now why this is formatting because this form takes a while to where it's done. On this one I'm going to be transferring video files. However, this card is a lot slower, so I'm only going to transfer one video file. There's two. One is a fraction under a quarter gig, and the second one, Space Ace, is a fraction under one gigabyte. So, there goes the quarter gig one. Now, it says 139 megabytes a second now. Ignore that, that is not true, as you can see, or just hover and hover at the end. Now one thing on this MacBook Pro which gets awkward and you'll see in a few minutes is Apple believes for some reason that people do not need SD card slots. They also believe that people do not need USB 3 adapters. So that only leaves USB 2, the internal hard drive, Firewire and Thunderbolt to transfer data. Well on this $3,000 MacBook Pro by stock, they gave a 5400 RPM drive, and I've asked them to replace it to an SSD drive, but said it will void my warranty. So that goes to USB 2, which has a maximum transfer rate of about 28 megabytes a second, which isn't fast enough. Then we have FireWire 800, which has a maximum transfer rate of about 60 megabytes a second, which still isn't fast enough, as you'll see in a few minutes. And then we also have Thunderbolt. Now, the problem with Thunderbolt is the Express card and Thunderbolt cannot be used at the same time. So unless I find a way of data chaining a SD card or an ultra high speed SD card reader and Thunderbolt at the same time, it's going to be awkward to see the true potential of this and upcoming faster cards. So anyway, there was the write speed of the 4GB class 4. Now I'm going to do a re-speed into this folder. And there it goes, it's done. Now what I'm going to do is eject that disk. And I will post the exact speeds on the YouTube video when it is done. And these cards are enough sort of pain to get out. Because my fingers are too big. Or the cards are too small. So the next card on this one is a 16 gigabyte class 10 card. There it goes. Once again, I'm going to farm out the card, so they're exactly the same in each one of them. Make sure we're done right now. 
So once again, here is the same video file. Windows replies had said 21.6 and it said 17 megabytes right a last second. And here is the one which is now a gigabyte. Once again, this is on a class 10 SD card. Once again, Windows is saying 46.4. Body calculations are always way up, I believe. The maximum on this card is about 20 megabytes. I believe on the last card is about 6 megabytes. I'm going right the last second, it said 19.8. So I'm going to do now. And I'm going to drag it to the class 10 folder. Anyway, it's done. And then I'm going to drag the gigabyte one to the class 10 folder. And I'm only saying 20. To 25 ish megabytes a second, but we'll see when it's actually done. I do apologize for my voice, I have a bad cold at the moment, and on top of that, it's extremely overcast today, which isn't helping recording this video. Here you go, that one's done. And once again, once these are done, I will report them, the actual speed on YouTube video. Okay, and I'm going to eject that card. And they also note that to make this video in a hard drive as fast as possible, I disabled all programs which use a hard drive, which is, and any, all those programs. And to remove the firewire drive, which I have, and USB connections and so on. So I can concentrate maximum hard drive throughput for these tests. So once again, there is a 16 gigabyte ultra high speed pro card. I'm going to format this drive once again. NTFS 64K cluster size. When I first got this card, it was actually formatted to FAT32 and by formatting to NTFS, I actually got quite a big speed increase. So if you get one of these cards, it's something worth remembering. So once again, here is the quarter gig file. And as you can see, it screams. It says uh, for a second, 142 megabytes. It wasn't, but it's still pretty fast. And here is the same. One gigabyte file. At the moment it's saying 81.6 and then 90.5 uh, megabytes a second. Well, I shall calculate it when it's done and we'll see. Okay, now I'm going to transfer this folder, these files, to the ultra high speed one drive. There you go. Done. And then the gigabyte one. I'm only saying 93 megabytes a second, 102, 89, 76. So I'll calculate them again. So there you go. There's the speeds on three different SD cards. And I'd like you to, well, just to let you know that the actual Ultra High Speed 1 card, which I didn't show you, I do not believe. It says Delkin Elite 633. And people might say, well, there's other ones like 
SanDisk now make one. But on the back, if you look closely, actually gives information for Toshiba. So I believe it's actually a Toshiba drive, which is just batched. And apart from my camera, doesn't want to get focus. And you go to Toshiba. So anyway, it's a blistering fast drive. I believe at the moment they make them this version to 64 gigabytes. I believe the SanDisk one, now you can get a 128 gigabyte and I believe Toshiba make a 128 gigabyte. They are extremely expensive. I picked this one up on eBay, which was used for about $45. So I got an extremely good price on this one. So if you can manage to get hold of one and you're using them for a high-end video or photography where you want to do burst modes, I highly recommend them. Uh, but once again, it depends whether the device you have one supports it. These readers you can buy from sonictech.com and they're, I believe, they're about $49 plus shipping. You can find them on eBay for about $40, including shipping. So there you have it.